All right, let's jump into a problem here um, that sometimes is a little tough to follow, okay? And so I wrote this out in a couple of different ways. It's called stoichiometry. We're going to do two different versions. One's called mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry, and one's called mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry. Now, the two of them are connected, and I'm trying to do them one over top of the other so you can see the connection. Uh, very easy to get lost in the numbers here, but basically what we're trying to do is, is use numbers, like measurements within a chemical reaction, to track what happens. For example, how much of this will react with something else, or how much of something else will be produced. So it's a way of tracking these, and there's, there's several approaches to this, but I want to just try to make sure you understand where the numbers are coming from and what they actually represent. So let's take a look at this first one. It says, how many moles of oxygen gas are needed to completely react with 0.25 moles of aluminum? Okay, now here we have a balanced equation for that reaction. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we recognize what things we're actually dealing with. Okay, so as I read this, I'm looking for how many moles of oxygen gas. Which one of these three things is oxygen gas? That's this one right here. Okay. And then we're going to try to compare that to 0.25 moles of aluminum, pure aluminum metal. Happens to be this one right here. Okay, so these are the two things we're looking at in this particular problem. We could also analyze the aluminum oxide, but you, it's important that you read a question and you pick out the two things you're actually trying to compare. The other stuff we're going to ignore for the moment. So for right now, we're just not going to pay attention to this. We're going to look at these two things. Okay? Now, the way we're going to start this is we're going to write down our beginning measure, our measurement we're trying to compare, 0.25 moles of aluminum. So I'm going to write down 0.25 moles Al. Now, within this reaction, we have a relationship. These coefficients that balance the equation, we've learned that that's called the mole ratio. Those coefficients tell us, in a perfect situation, how many moles of each thing would be necessary. So what it really is saying here is, four moles of aluminum will completely react with three moles of oxygen gas. That's the ratio we need, four to three. Now, what we're trying to do is take that ratio and scale it down to, well, what if we're only dealing with 0.25 moles, less than one mole of aluminum, how much oxygen is necessary? Not three moles, we don't even have one mole of this, let alone four. So we're going to set up a little conversion. Okay. We're going to make it look like a lot of the other conversions we've done. We're taking moles of aluminum and we're going to try to convert it and compare it to moles of oxygen gas. So on top I put the change I'm trying to make. I want moles of aluminum to turn into moles of oxygen. And once we have moles of something, we can compare it to anything else in the reaction. Now moles of aluminum is going to go down here. As we learned before, we're just trying to cancel those units out. This is dimensional analysis. So moles of aluminum go down there on the bottom. Okay. Now, I have a mole to mole ratio. Anytime you see moles on top and moles on the bottom, what we are looking for is these numbers right here. Okay. Four to three. Which one goes where? Well, let's take a look at what they're next to. Three is next to the oxygen gas. So wherever I see oxygen gas, I'm going to put a three. Wherever I see aluminum, I'm going to put a four. This is our mole ratio. What we're doing though is multiplying that ratio by 0.25 so that we can scale this down and get the actual amount of oxygen that would be necessary to react with 0.25 moles of aluminum, not four moles. So this is how we do mole to mole stoichiometry. It's one simple step. Now what I'm gonna do on my calculator is I'm gonna go 0.25 times three divided by four. Remember I multiply the things on top and I divide by the things on the bottom. Now when I do that, I'm going to end up with a number that says 0 0.1875, and i got to interpret what that means. So look at this as one big fraction. I've got moles on top of aluminum, moles of aluminum on the bottom. Those cancel out, and this is what that number represents. That number represents moles of oxygen gas. And that right there is the heart of stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is about comparing one thing to another thing within a reaction. That could be two reactants, it could be a reactant and a product, it could be two products, it doesn't matter. I can compare aluminum to anything in this reaction as long as I have the balanced numbers that go in front. Now, in a lab setting, this is great information to have, but it isn't always terribly useful because I don't have any devices in my lab that just measure out moles of something. Moles is not a typical measurement. It's one of these connecting units we use a ton in chemistry, but I can't go in and just measure out moles of aluminum. 
chances of me actually knowing what 0.25 moles of aluminum looks like is pretty slim. So what I can measure in, in the lab is mass. I have a scale. I've got a balance anywhere I look, and I can measure the mass in grams of aluminum. I can measure the weight of anything. So how do we can take this situation and now deal with things that we can actually measure? Well, what I want you to picture is this step right here, this process we just did, let's bring that down here, okay? But mole to mole, even though it's a crucial piece of the puzzle, it's not the entire puzzle. I'm gonna have to somehow figure out how to take my beginning stuff, whatever that is, and use it when it's uh, a measurement in grams. And then I gotta somehow figure out how to get my my ending measurement that it seems to be in moles here and turn it into grams. I need to be able to communicate grams with grams. So that's what mass to mass stoichiometry is. So let's remind ourselves of this process, okay? We got this whole thing going on, but we're going to do it in a different context now with a different set of measurements and you're going to see how this looks quite a bit uh, more involved. It's really very simple, but I want you to see where it comes from. So. Ignore this question now. We're going to jump down to this one here. It's dealing with the same reaction, the same two things, but we have a different kind of measurement. Okay, this one says how many grams of oxygen, because that's something I can actually measure out, would react with 10 grams of aluminum. So see, it's grams to grams that we're trying to compare. Those are two measurements I can actually like put my hands around and measure. So how are we going to make this happen? Well, I'm going to try to write out a process here, and this is going to take a little getting used to. All right, once you see it, it's a little easier to understand in reverse. So I'm going to start with 10 grams of aluminum. All right, now, problem is 10 grams of aluminum doesn't mean anything up here with these numbers. These are mole ratios. So I, the first thing I need to do is I need to get this amount into moles, and this is a calculation you've done before. Notice I'm drawing quite a bit more stuff here. That's okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take 10 grams of aluminum. I would like it to say moles just like this one did. Well, that's an easy one-step conversion. I'm going to change it to moles of aluminum. Now, many of you would be, um, your habits would jump in right here and you try to start putting some numbers in. And that's not necessarily wrong, but I'm going to try to do this whole thing without numbers to make sure I've got the right process. And then I'll put in the numbers that fit. So I would like to turn grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum. Now, I'm just like the way this one started. Okay. Once I've got it to moles of aluminum, just like up here, I can do the exact same thing I just got done doing. I can turn it to moles of oxygen. And then once I've got it to moles of oxygen, so just like I calculated here, I can always turn moles back to grams using the periodic table. Now, I want you to look at this. This is kind of, it looks like a lot of stuff. I want to make sure we interpret what's going on here. Here I've got my mass of aluminum. I'm going to use the periodic table and convert it to moles. Okay. Then once I've got that, this problem is what's happening. I can turn moles of aluminum to moles of oxygen by looking at my reaction. But then I'm left with an answer that doesn't really help me much, and so I'm going to try to turn that answer back into grams, which is something I can physically compare. I can actually weigh out. Now, what about all this stuff on the bottom? See, the reason I did the things on the top is once you get these steps in place, here's the transformation I'm going to make. Now all I have to do, I, the, the decisions are already made. All I have to do is fill in the blanks that go along with my dimensional analysis. So for example, grams of aluminum is gonna go down here. Moles of aluminum goes down here. I just carry things down diagonally. Moles of oxygen goes down there. Okay, so I didn't really think about that. That's just part of my habits. Now we gotta look at what's going on here. So I wanna highlight something. Notice everything that has aluminum in it, right here, right here, right here, and right here. Everything I just underlined in green represents aluminum. Then all of a sudden, I've got oxygen. So where it turns from green to red, we are changing, looking, from, looking at aluminum into looking at oxygen within this reaction. Now, what about all that stuff? We've got to put some numbers in there. So I'm going to give you some hints here. This part right here always comes from the balanced equation. It's the same thing we did up here. You're looking for these numbers that balance the equation that tell us our mole ratio. So in front of aluminum, I've got a four. 
and in front of oxygen, I've got a three. Look at that. Okay, same thing. So this step is right here in the middle. But on each side of this, we have a grams to mole conversion that we're going to use the periodic table for. Okay? So anytime we're looking at grams to moles, we're going to be looking at the periodic table. Okay. Now, how do I know what to put in there? Well, when we look at the periodic table, it tells us one mole of everything we know of on the planet. One mole of every substance we know of. Any combination you can think of. So anytime you look at the periodic table, you're going to put one with those moles. We don't worry about these numbers up here except for in that one ratio. We put it in there one time, and that's it. That tells us what the ratio is within the reaction. Now I just have to look on the periodic table. I look at aluminum, and aluminum's mass is 27 grams per mole. Oxygen's mass, now there's two of them, remember it's 16, but there's two of those because it's a diatomic molecule. So this is 32 grams per one mole. Now look at what happens to my units. Okay, there's a lot of stuff here to pay attention to, but see what happens. Grams of aluminum, grams of aluminum, those cancel. Moles of aluminum, those cancel. Moles of oxygen, those cancel. And my final result should represent grams of oxygen. Now how do I calculate that? I multiply everything on the top, and I divide by everything on the bottom. And when I punch all that in, I get a value of 8.9 grams of oxygen gas. Look how much more useful that is. I can actually go measure out 8.9 grams of oxygen to make this reaction happen. I have a hard time measuring moles. Moles is a key component. This problem is this middle step right here, but I really need some conversions on either end to turn it into something useful. Okay. And that's basically how you do mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry.